webinar. Once again, thank you for being in here at this hour of the time. Okay, so what is Networking and Learning Group and who has founded these founded this group? So it's Jason Abraham. He's an internal auditor and content creator. He works with a government entity in uh, UAE and he, ha he has five S certification. He's very much uh, into video makings and uh, trying new technology, uh, which in fact, uh, he teaches so many things and I'm like, uh, really, oh, Jason has tried this. Let me also try it, which is great. Thank you, Jason, for this. And myself, my name is Sushma Priju Pablani. I'm an HR professional and I have a master's in commerce. I have diploma in computer science and I'm an HR generalist working in a free zone in UAE. So we both started this group with an intention of uh, sharing knowledge and learnings, the experiences, not only with both of us, but with uh, uh, many people across the globe. So we have different uh, people joining from different countries. We have people from Bangladesh, we have from India, Pakistan and uh, Singapore. So it's a great journey. Till now, it has been uh, 27 webinars and today we are on 28th webinar. So we have learned so much in these webinars with these meetings with so many people around, their learnings, their uh, experiences, which add so much of value to these webinars. And I'm really honored to have such an amazing platform and share with you the learnings we have. Also, if you would like to share something with us, then please do let us know. Please connect with us and you may be the speaker in next few weeks. Thank you very much. We have different, uh, we have more people within our team, which is Takiuddin Teparambil. He's a QHSE professional. He's MBA in HR, MSc in biotechnology. He's working in Abu Dhabi and he's more into food control and uh, uh, quality department. We have another uh, team member who is Anil Kunaku. He's an HR professional, MBA and MHRM. He's also a coach and a mentor. So they are also the pillars of NLG. We work together. So whatever you see, there is so much of uh, coordination going on behind. As soon as we finish today's webinar, we have like lined up speakers for three, four weeks, definitely. But yes, okay, can you share this? Can you do this? What is the topic? What will be, uh, how, how will it go? You know, all those things, which is really great. So why is networking and learning group? As I shared a small brief earlier, so it is just purely a platform where we network, learn and share knowledge with each other. And please come up so that you can share yours with us as well. You can join us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and WhatsApp. So we have two WhatsApp group as of now. When Or we can move it to Telegram. What do you say, Jason? <laughs> yeah, because we'll have more and then it will be difficult to manage. So we can move it to Telegram as well. Just a thought. Suddenly it oh, came to my yeah. mind. In future, in future, yeah. Yes, sure. Okay. So what will be the rules to follow? So please mute muted so that participants and the speaker are not disturbed. We can take maximum from the uh, speaker. You can use the chat box. You can uh, put your comments, your questions, your likes and reactions. And uh, the presentation will be given by the speaker. And at the end, we'll have Q&A session. But in between, if you want to uh, raise your question, you can raise it, but it will be taken at the end. You may take notes or screenshots as you like. Which so that you can refer to them later. Who is the speaker today? So the speaker today is Mr. Ramamurthy Pachayapan. He is a consultant and he has been working with um, large organizations earlier. He's based in India and he's joining us today to share his knowledge on finance. Um, I would not say much on that because I want to hear from him what exactly he'll be sharing us. So he has been a software development, a product, uh, a project management consultant and products development, products implementation, customer support. He is interested with the startups 
and he has when i was reading actually his linkedin profile i never knew he has been a lecturer and a scientist he has masters of engineering which is great 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 and with much without much delay i hand over the platform to rama sir welcome welcome here on this amazing platform thank you for accepting our invitation and thank you for being here thank you thank you sushma thank you jason thanks uh, anil kunuku and uh, uh, takyudin uh, it's an amazing platform um, thanks to all joined here uh, good evening and good afternoon so i today i'll be talking about personal finance specifically about various asset classes i used to work for corporates till 2014 um in 2014 i came out of corporate and started doing my own consulting so what happened is uh, during my corporate working times i really had you know kind of zero knowledge on the finance so i really started learning about it last 4 to 5 years and i see that many people who are in the full time job they do the same thing they don't take time out to learn about finance which is very very important the other important thing in life is relationship how to handle the relationship that also people really take it for granted and do not learn okay so moving on let's uh, talk about the personal finance uh, sushma can you present the uh, ppt uh, personal finance uh, i uh, basically what i would like to do is that whatever i am actually i am in the learning process it is not that i am expert or any such thing i am in the learning process i would like to share my knowledge whatever i gained over last 4 or 5 years with the people so that they don't wait till they retire or they get into something else so it's better to learn about it as early as possible so let's look at what is an asset so i i picked up um, the definition from robert kiyosaki uh, most of you might have heard about him he has written uh, many books one of them is rich dad poor dad which is very famous and there are many other books uh, the way he presents uh, is very very simple and straight forward not that it is very sophisticated or great or uh, you know complete but it is simple and practical so hence i picked up his definition of what is asset an asset puts money in my pocket a liability takes money out of my pocket so basically whenever you evaluate whether something is asset or liability use this simple formula does the asset give you money on a regular basis or not if it gives it is an asset if it doesn't it is a liability for example your house which you are living if you are, if you are owning it so it doesn't give you money whereas you do uh, spend on maintenance so it is not asset it is a liability as per uh, robert kiyosaki's definition but if you have a house and you rented it out then there is a monthly rental coming up then there is a net flow of money coming to you yeah, after the expenses then it is an asset okay so the other important things few more quotes about um, Uh, the assets rich people acquire assets the poor and middle class acquire liabilities that they think are assets that's the crux of the whole thing most of the people working people they acquire assets thinking that they are assets but actually they are liabilities like you no know, buying some you no know, huge car or you know buying the house but not really getting inflow of money there are so many other things but this is the essential thing so the people who are rich in the sense the people who are knowledgeable in finance they know what is real asset but we can also know all of us the rich focus on their asset columns while everyone else focus on their income statements so there is a difference uh, of course we'll briefly talk about um, uh, the important three important uh, uh, financial statements uh, which is income and uh expense asset and liability and cash flow those three are very very important i think it is important for each of us to learn briefly about them so what he says is the rich people focus on asset once you buy the asset and leave it and basically make sure that it is fine tuned to generate the uh, 
flow of money, then it keeps give, keeps giving you the uh, money. But if you only work on income alone, income and expense, then you don't have that kind of income. That's what he says in that. Think of it this way. Once your dollar goes into your asset column, it becomes your employee. The best thing about money is that it works 24 hours a day and can work for generations. So that's the crux of it. When you get money that is not sufficient, how do you convert that money or income into an asset which generates continuous inflow of money is the essence of uh, being financially educated or being rich or whatever you want to call. Moving on. So what is the prerequisite for one to be financially uh, educated, uh, to be in the path of becoming rich? Simple math and common sense are all you need to do well in financially. So that's all is required. Simple mathematics and common sense is what is required. Invest first in education. In reality, the only real asset you have is your mind, the most powerful tool we have. So this is all from Robert Kiyosaki and very simple and straightforward common sense. Okay, so the other prerequisite for us to really get into the actual assets, understanding the assets and acquiring those assets is that these four things. So you should have emergency fund to take care of nine to 12 months of expenses. Let's say you are out of job, you should have sufficient money uh, in cash in the sense in savings account or some liquid funds or cash such that nine to 12 months of expenses is taken care of even if you don't work. So that's the first and foremost prerequisite. Second, life insurance. So you should have 15 to 20 times of your annual income as the uh, maturity value in life insurance. This is a must. Typically it is advised that you go for uh, term insurance that you can discuss with your financial advisor or somebody who is good at uh, insurance. The other important thing is medical insurance for yourself and for the family. And more importantly, debt-free. I know it is not uh, practical, but at least, you should reduce your debt as much as possible. And then whatever the loans or uh, debts you have, you should have sufficient uh, backing up to uh, you know, pay them off uh, either monthly or at one shot or multiple shots. So the other prerequisite is to understand what is income and expense, what is asset and liability and cash flow. So this is normal thing for any business, any corporate, and it is also important for each individual and family. So income and expense is very simple. What I do is download. Now all of us operate through um, banking accounts, you know, cards, credit card, debit card, uh, wallets, or you no. Know. So you can download these statements from your banks in an XLS if you know XLS, and then start um, uh, classifying. You can add more columns on what is the kind of expense is that, and what is the category, subcategory for what purpose it is done and all those things. Then you can analyze briefly on what is the kind of expenses you have and how much you, exp you know, expense for what category. Uh, similarly, the income. Income is straightforward. You may not have too many incomes. So that is straightforward. You can easily classify. So similarly, list out all your assets and liabilities. So your assets being what we talked about, either your assets either in asset side or liability side, depending upon whether it generates any income or not. Cash flow is another statement which really talks about it is not sufficient to have just the assets or the income. What is most important is the liquidity of the assets, the availability of uh, the money actually for you to use it on a regular basis. So you may have huge asset in terms of uh, real estate and many other assets where it is not liquid. If you want immediately, you may not get it. So it is important to find out how to generate the liquidity, uh, which is cash flow over a period. So these three things, please start learning about these things. And it's very simple, all three are very simple. So moving on. Okay, so this is uh, kind of, you know, Robert Kiyosaki uh, classifies the people, uh, uh, poor class, middle class and rich class people, how they look at the, income expense and asset and liabilities. 
So whatever the income they get, they just spend it. That is the poor people, you know. So they don't even worry about acquiring asset. So that's that's how he classifies people as poor. And the middle class, what they do is they think that they are acquiring asset, but actually they are acquiring liabilities. So what they do, the income, whatever the income they come, uh, they get it. They pay for the liabilities, and they do the expenses. So they not only do the the income is used not only for expenses; it is used to pay up the liabilities. So it is more burden for the middle class actually, because they don't understand what is an asset. So that's that's a point uh, of Robert Kiyosaki, and we will try to understand a little bit on what is an asset, what are the various assets possible. That is the purpose of this particular session. The rich understand clearly what is asset, and in fact, whatever the income they get, they put it in asset, which generates income, and then the assets generate income, further income. So they have double income: the regular income <clears throat> plus the assets generating income. Okay, so that's the difference between various. Classes of people, Robert Kiyosaki explains. Moving on. Okay, what are the various asset classes we know of? So these are the, some of the asset classes. Cash, cash in the sense it is not just the hard cash. It can be liquid funds. It can be online wallets. It can be savings account, and commodities. So basically, you can um, invest in uh, the most uh, prominent commodities are crude oil, gold, copper, wheat, and many other uh, commodities. Fixed income, which is basically uh, debt funds. You can also call it as debt funds. Uh, basically, your fixed deposits, bonds, post office products, and debentures. These are the typical fixed income or debt funds. Equity, this is the stocks. So here, what you do is uh, you... Uh, uh, buy the uh, part of the company kind of thing, right? You all aware of uh, Warren Buffett who focuses mainly on invest investing in stocks. So this is uh, another asset class. And there are many alternate investments. Uh, like for example, many people collect very uh, many artif artifacts, arts, antique goods, rare and vintage pieces. They collect it and uh, sell it for huge uh, amount. So this is also another asset class, but it is very, very, uh, uh, what to say, uh, rare. Uh, it is not regular asset class. So these are some of the asset classes. We will try to see more asset classes going forward. Next slide, Krishna. Uh, yeah, one of the important asset classes is the business. Okay, in business, what you do is that you, whatever the idea you have, whatever the business process you have, you start uh, setting up your business, which obviously generates much more income for you. So this is the best, one of the best asset classes one can have. So once you uh, uh, design your business process and uh, know, understand the supply and demand, sales and marketing, uh, here what you do is you leverage people's time and skill sets. When you are working for a company, you spend your time, that's it. Whatever the time you spend, that much money you can get, that much income you can get. Whereas once you start the business, you can scale it up. You can start your own business, you can do network marketing, you can do family business, you can start online business as well. So there are a lot of advantages in business. First and foremost, you can scale up and grow uh, uh, to a maximum ex uh, no extent. You can give job opportunities for other people and there is a lot of tax advantage. In fact, the maximum uh, asset which is getting um, taxed is your earned income, basically your job. When you are doing the day job, that is the maximum uh, tax you pay. But business, you pay less tax. Next one. So starting a business is always a good thing if you can you know, do it. The next one is real estate. This also most of us know. Uh, here the real estate, we there are multiple real estates, residential, commercial, and industrial. So here one can buy and sell. Uh, in fact, this is something Robert Kiyosaki uh, you know, does himself and he very clearly explains very well that he doesn't put in too much money. He can get a uh, loan from the banks, maximum loan possible and then buy it and then you know, uh, do some value add and sell it for higher value or construct and uh, rent it out residential or commercial or industrial and get a regular uh, income, which is used to pay the 
EMI or the you no know, liabilities uh, address that way. You can get the rental, and there is a lot of tax advantage. If you buy uh, real estate and sell it, you don't need to pay the tax immediately. In fact, you, you can use that money and buy a bigger real estate so that you don't need to pay the tax at all for quite some time uh, legally. Okay, so this is the uh, typical traditional real estate thing. So there is another thing called REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. For the for um, uh, people, because the traditional real estate, you need huge capital, either from your side or you have to get loan from the bank. When you get loan from bank, obviously they will want the uh, uh, security. Normally the real estate itself can be a security. But with REIT, here it is, uh, available in stock exchange, you can buy uh, in whatever the minimum quantity available in stock exchange. So this is something uh, really interesting. You can buy short term, long term, whatever you want to buy. For example, in Indian stock exchange, there are two REITs available right now, Embassy and Mindspace. So you can start buying these things uh, either for long term or short term or medium term. So this is the great advantage actually for many people. So moving on, fixed income. So fixed income is uh, also called debt, debt fund. Uh, basically what it means is that you lend money to someone else for a particular period. So what you do is you lend to your neighbors, lend to friends and family and all, you don't know whether you will get back. Whereas there are some specific uh, ways, particularly the corporates and government, they, borrow the money from the retail investors like us and they uh, uh, you know, give you something called bond or uh, debentures uh, and other uh, forms like fixed deposit. Uh, that's where they give you the fixed return. Basically, whatever the money they you uh, pay to them, which is basically what they borrow from you, they pay periodic uh, return, periodic interest they pay to you. So this is one of the uh, relatively risk-free form of asset or investment. So you all know about fixed deposit. You go to any banks, you can do the fixed deposit. Bonds is issued by uh, the government as well as the corporates. So it is backed up by securities. Bonds is backed up by security. Post office products are really good. Uh, you, you can go for that. It's typically like savings and fixed kind of thing, fixed deposit kind of thing. Debentures. debentures is like bonds, but it is not secured. Uh, so there they give higher rate of in, uh, interest, uh, depending upon the credit rating and the reputation of the company which issues debentures, you can go for that. But there is a risk involved. It is not backed up by security. So overall it is less return, but less risk. So what is important is that to look at, can it meet the inflation? So inflation is typically you know, around seven to eight percent. So you are you are in India. I'm talking about. So your return should be more than eight percent typically. That is what you should look for uh, across uh, across asset classes. Some asset class can be low, something more. So you should mix and match it. Moving on. Right, cash. So as I said at the beginning, cash is not only the hard cash, it is also online wallets, savings accounts, and liquid funds. Liquid funds in mutual fund, you have liquid funds. Where you keep it, you can immediately withdraw that. Either within um, a savings bank, you can immediately withdraw. Wallets also, you can immediately withdraw. Liquid funds, it may come in one or two days. If you withdraw today, you may get your funds tomorrow or day after. So that's how. There the return, the, the interest rate is a little bit more. So uh, here you should have sufficient uh, money in cash, uh, in the form of cash, particularly the emergency fund should be in, there in these forms. Uh, here also, even if you have hard cash, you have challenges. So in any asset, whatever the asset you talk about, including the hard cash, there is always some risk or other. So you have to be aware of it and make sure that uh, you allocate various uh, amount or percentage of uh, money into various asset classes. You should not keep it only in one, you should have in multiple asset classes. Moving on. Equity, so this is one of the uh, important and uh, uh, best of uh, asset classes. 
it, the uh, risk is high, return is also high. So here it requires a lot of understanding. You cannot just blindly go and buy some stock and then think that it will give you return. It requires a lot of work and understanding. So people do fundamental analysis of various companies. They do technical analysis. They keep watching various uh, news and uh, you know, market, macro and microeconomics. So it is not a straightforward thing. Uh, at the same time, we can also make it very simple. So you don't go and buy some random stocks. Instead, there are a few uh, simple approaches one can follow. Okay, first of all, stocks, there is a, a DMAT account and trading account. Many of the financial institutes offer it. Uh, most of the banks offer, and there are non-banks also which offer this uh, uh, account. Once you open these accounts, you can start buying uh, the stocks. So the stocks are bought in uh, multiple ways. First one is IPO, initial uh, offer, this is the initial public offer. Uh, you can buy through uh, IPO or private place placements. Private placement is basically before the company uh, starts issuing IPO, they can uh, offer the uh, equity or share to people. Secondary market is the majority one. Once after the IPO is over, the uh, stock market, it's available for people to buy and sell. So that is where people really invest and uh, uh, do fair, you know, selling and buying. So one of the effective ways of investing in stocks is ETFs, the exchange traded funds. So what happens here is uh, it, it is in the form of index or gold. Gold is also, gold is also sold. Yeah. yeah, so uh, here what happens is, uh, for example, in Indian market, Nifty 50 is a ETF. So the top 50 companies uh, identified by uh, NSE, uh, those, there are two ex no primary exchanges in India, NSE, National uh, Securities Exchange, BSE, Bombay Securities Exchange. These two are important ones. So Sensex is uh, top 500 companies in BSC. Nifty 50 is top 50 companies in NSC. So what happens is they offer in the form of one stock, which consists of all the 50 or all the 500. So you can buy that as the ETF. So that is the easiest and best way of investing for the starters. Instead of going and identifying what is the right company to buy, right stock to buy, the easiest way is to by the ETFs. So the index ETF, there are many indexes. One is Nifty 50 Sensex. There is, uh, uh, what is that, IT specific, there is you know, sector specific, uh, and there is a small cap, large cap, and uh, middle cap. So all kind of uh, ETFs are there, but Nifty 50 and Sensex is something simple and straightforward. You can go for that. So that is the easiest way to uh, invest in equity. And the other one, gold also. Gold is also available as ETF. There is another thing which is called portfolio management system. There are many people who offer this, uh, many financial institutes and uh, uh, non-banks, uh, they offer. What they do is they open uh, the DMAT account, trading account for you. Uh, instead of you operating, they will operate for you. They will decide what to buy, what to sell and generate the income. And they obviously take the commission or the you know, fees for managing this portfolio. Uh, so they have minimum uh, of, I think, 25 lakhs or 50 lakhs investment on this. Um, so that is one system which is available. The other one is alternate investment fund. Here, it is much more flexible for them, uh, but it is much more, uh, the, the size is much more. I think AF is one crore. Minimum is one crore you can you have to invest in this. So they don't limit to only stocks. They also can do private placements. They can also get into different kind of investments. Uh, even uh, the derivatives, uh, they can invest in derivatives, which we'll talk about it later on. So you need to have DMAT account, trading account. Uh, so stock market is highly volatile and the risk and return is high, both of them. And obviously the taxes are relatively low compared to obviously your earned income, this is much, much low. Uh, there is a possible high return. So that's that's about uh, equities. Moving on. Mutual funds. 
So this is another uh, easy way for the retail investors and the starters, you know, the people who are beginners, this is the easiest way to uh, really uh, invest. So what happens here is that the mutual fund house, they basically get money from you and they will invest internally with multiple equities. They can invest in equities as well as bonds. So basically equity uh, uh, and the debt fund or the bonds. So the combination of that, they will invest. So here the advantage is you can invest as low as 500 rupees in India. So you don't need to have huge amount. You don't need to analyze what is the right company to buy. The fund manager in this mutual fund house decides to buy what to buy, you know, what is the right thing to buy. So here the return is uh, you know, decent enough, uh, depending upon uh, what kind of fund, because when it is equity fund, the risk is more, uh, debt fund risk is relatively less, but the risk is there everywhere, whether it is equity fund or debt fund or any cash, everything there's a, a risk associated with that, one needs to understand that. So it is a portfolio of stocks, bonds, and other securities. It is diversified. Uh, there is an expense ratio because there is a fund manager and there are many other entities involved in this. Uh, they will uh, take away uh, the expenses and then remaining returns, they will distribute to the uh, investors. So there is a regular and direct uh, method. Direct method is where you can directly open an online account with the mutual fund houses. There are so many mutual fund houses in India. You can open an uh, online account and then you can start buying on your own based on whatever you understand or whatever uh, financial advisor gives you. So the other one is regular where um, it is through the, through the financial advisor. So what is the difference? When you go through the financial advisor, obviously he may give you no know, very good uh, suggestion because the financial advisor knows many things. Uh, but what happens is he gets he gets one percent of your um, total return, uh, your total investment uh, every year. So your return gets reduced. But when you are going directly on your own, you don't need to pay that additional amount. So that that's about mutual funds. For most of the people starters, this is the best way of. Uh, investing uh, into uh, equities and debt market. Moving on, yeah. Derivatives. So derivatives is basically, uh, it's based on the securities like equity, commodities, currencies, and other basic stocks. Based on that, they come out with something called futures and options. These are highly volatile, highly risky. So it is not at all advisable for the starters, the retail investors to get into it. So why I'm talking about it? Because many a times when some financial advisor or somebody who gives you a tip, they will say that you get into this, you can get quick money. No, you don't. This requires a lot of understanding, a lot of experience. So don't get into this till you really understand the financial market in and out. So that is the reason why I'm saying that this is another, another asset class and don't get into it. So that is the reason why I'm telling that here. So moving on. Same thing, hedge funds also same thing. In fact, here you cannot even get into it. It is like mutual funds, mutual funds for, for retail investors, mutual funds. For the real, real, real rich and corporate people, hedge funds. So what happens is it operates like mutual funds. So the financial houses offer hedge funds. So they invest in highly risk, risky uh, uh, securities like derivatives, and they uh, really go into different kind of investments which are absolutely risky. So there is a, you no, know, the return is high obviously, and the risk is also high. So I just want to say that there is something called hedge funds, which is similar to mutual funds. Mutual funds for retail investors, hedge funds for high net worth individuals and corporates. Moving on. Right, commodities. So commodities are like, you know, the typical commodities are uh, metals like gold, silver, uh, nickel, 
zinc and many other commodities are uh, uh, available in the market. Uh, some people directly they buy, but there is something called MCX, uh, Multi Commodities Exchange. That offers, whenever you open your trading account, uh, the MCX is also offered to you if, if you want. So you can buy the commodities, but the commodities do not avail, no, they, they are not available directly in MCX. It is available in the form of derivatives, futures and options. So hence, it is not advisable to go for the typical uh, commodities like this. Uh, but it is important asset class. So when you really understand the financial market, once you really move towards the financial um, uh, education and uh, you uh, have more money, then you can get into it. But for the time being, you be aware that there is something called commodities asset class, which primarily deals with metals, energy like crude oil, natural gas, livestock and meat and agricultural products. So that's, that's what is uh, the information right now, moving on. This is important class, gold. So here, typically people are aware of gold as a jewelry they buy and sometimes gold biscuits, but uh, there are other forms of gold available. I think in fact, the better than uh, you know, buying the physical gold is in the form of government, you know, government bond. So government of India or RBI offers the bond. So once you have uh, any of this um, uh, DMAT or uh, trading account, you can buy directly from there. And it is also, av also available as e EF, ETF, uh, exchange trade and traded fund. So it, it is like stock. You can buy gold in the form of stock in the uh, electronic form. So like you buy a company stock, you can buy gold as a stock. Also mutual fund offers index fund, gold index fund. So these are the best ways of investing in gold. So basically what you do is, uh, when you buy this, the price keeps going up like the physical gold. And whenever you want to redeem, you can redeem that in the sense you can sell it and get the money you want. And then if you want to really buy the physical gold, you can buy from that money. So it is easier and safer. Otherwise, when you buy the physical gold, you know, storing it, securing it is very, very difficult. Of course, you can buy sufficient gold for the jewelry purpose. Whatever you want to wear, please buy it, that's fine. But beyond that, for the saving, for the uh, long-term saving and assets, do not buy the physical one, you can buy in the other form. So it is available as bond, as stock, and as mutual fund, very simple and straightforward. Moving on. Right, so this is another, uh, another asset class, arts, artifacts, antiques, and rare items. So this, I think, uh, this is, again, it's not very prominent, but there are some people who really do it as a, a big business and big asset class. Again, this is just for information, not for you to really get into it, but you never know. In future, it may become much more prominent, much more easier to do it. Uh, next one is intellectual properties. Again, this is very, very important, particularly the people who are working in corporates and you know, creative job and, you know, engineering and many other uh, things. You have to be aware of this. This is a very, very important uh, thing to know. Uh, trademarks and brands, patents and technologies, copyrights, and of course, books. What are the books you write? You get the royalty from that. So similarly, the patent, if you really register, people who use it, uh, you, know, you can get the royalty. So this is another important asset class we ought to be aware and we should start utilizing. We are not uh, you know, used to this. Moving on to social media. Here again, this is a relatively new one. You can obviously monetize all these things. Internet, <laughs> there are so many people, they uh, reserve and buy the domain and then they can sell it for more. Uh, blogs, Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, SlideShare, all these things are places where you can put in your uh, intellect, you can add uh, value and then there is a possibility of monetizing. This can be another asset class going forward. It can be prominent. Moving on. This is a you know, very uh, new and a very revolutionary uh, asset class called digital currency. It is also called cryptocurrency. Uh, in 2008, uh, there was a guy called Satoshi Nakamoto. He wrote a paper uh, explaining the concept of cryptocurrency. So here the interesting thing is, in this, the government is not involved at all. The cryptocurrency is created among the set of people community and it can be utilized among them. 
and it is uh, legal in many countries it is not legal in many other countries but in future it will become a prominent one of the prominent uh, asset class you have to be aware of it uh, it's it's very interesting uh, uh, thing to uh, be aware of there are so many cryptocurrencies already available in the market bitcoin litecoin ethereum ripple so many other things are available but be aware of it uh, so don't go for it unless it is legal in the country uh, you live in uh, otherwise there is a lot of fraud also so you have to be aware of it even though it is very uh, interesting concept uh, you have to be aware of it. it it really went like anything some of the uh, the bitcoin has gone up like you know unimaginable uh, amounts and it also came down and of course any such asset classes will keep uh, you know uh, going up and down but overall it was very good moving on right so the graph explains briefly about what are the returns and risk involved so higher the return higher the risk so cash low risk low return fixed uh, fixed interest which is basically uh, fd and you know liquid funds those kind of things bond it's um, relatively higher risk and higher uh, return property is like you know a little bit above that alternative investments is above that and shares is at the top and of course the other ones i said like commodities uh, cryptocurrencies and all much beyond shares so here it only shows some of them uh, so you have to be aware of the return versus uh, uh, risk it is not always this case in, in fact in some of the shares you can identify some specific shares where there is a high return but the risk is also less so there are uh, there are possibilities so similarly cash looks less risky but it is also risky in demonetization time it was a big risk so that happens once in a while but not always but even otherwise even when you have huge cash it's very difficult to safeguard that so you have to be uh, aware of how to fine tune all these things this is in general is like this but it is possible that you can make some of the shares uh, good return with less risk also right so next slide sushma right so here is the list of assets with alphabets a b c d so a for <coughs> arts b for business c for cash or commodities d for digital currencies e for equity f for fixed income g for gold h for hedge funds i for intellectual properties and of course the other ones are mrs mutual fund real estate and social media you don't need to really get into every one of them but what is more important is this key assets which i listed the right side uh, you should definitely get into each one of them fixed uh, depending upon your uh, situation fixed income which is basically bonds and fixed uh, no fixed uh, deposits business if you can start some business nothing like that you should real estate again you know which generates income for you cash cash is not just hard cash it is savings liquid uh, funds gold as i told you there are four different ways of investing in gold you should invest in that equity you should get into that but mainly get into etf instead of getting into the individual stocks uh, the index etf or gold etf mutual funds you should get into that that is very simple and straightforward so with this uh, i end the presentation here uh, we can get started with question and answers thank you Okay, great, great, great. Thank you very much, Rama sir. So I hope uh, everyone has got certain idea on how the asset classes are uh, vary from each other and how we should be investing, what all we should be looking at. I'm sure there are so many questions uh, running in through everyone's mind. Thank you very much once again. It has been a great learning, and the book you referred to, Rich Dad Poor Dad. is an amazing book to read that's the book which i had finished uh, recently and it has been a wonderful journey and i i also uh, told my elder one you know like this is what this book tells all about and uh, she was listening to me carefully so yeah it's really an interesting book i have whatever i have learned from that book i have put it in the summary as well because i liked it so much 
it's really good book to read uh thank you thank you ramaji jason over to jason over to you <laughs> uh thank you shma thanks uh, rama sir thanks for the wonderful session um before starting the question question and answer session i would like to take this opportunity to ask you uh, two three basic question uh, because i am learning about stock markets the shares and all recently because i am interested to invest in these things so as a startup um if you can give uh, me a, like a checklist which i should follow uh, basically uh, i'm looking on um, uh, bsc and uh, uh, nifty so if i if i can uh, focus on uh, these two share markets uh, what all basic uh, guidances i should take that's my first uh, uh, question my second question would be um uh, do brokers uh, play an important role in this whole um, share markets because uh, when we are going direct to invest online because there are a lot of online options like moneycontrol.com they have a portfolio uh, we can start a portfolio on moneycontrol and then we can directly deal in the shares but um, if we go directly to um, a broker like geojet finance or bajaj finance something like that uh, is it necessary always that um, a mediator like banks are uh, always involved obviously we need a demat account to start a ipo and all but um, uh, uh, share uh, stock market sorry stock market sharing but uh, is it always necessary that a broker or a th- intermediary is uh, involved in this whole transaction sure yes uh, jason yeah so uh, yes there is a need for your broker in between uh, we cannot directly get into the uh, stock exchange which is sebi and the bsc and nsc Uh, they do offer they do offer for individuals also but it is a less, slightly complicated process so the easiest way is to go through the brokers the brokers could be uh, the banks each bank also has their own uh, brokerage and also the non banks uh, like you said geojet uh, there is one guy uh, in india zerodai z e r o d h a so he seems to be doing very well in terms of uh, making it you uh, know uh, simpler and see you are one is he, he is required he will get a commission whatever you buy and sell he will get commission right so you have to be aware of that so many of the, uh, 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 the um, people charge huge commissions so you should really compare and see who offers relatively uh, good commission and then also they should be stable and you uh, know good companies so in my experience zeroda is good in terms of uh, Uh, commission as well as uh, stability and the performance of the system there are some people the system is not you uh, know uh, fast enough so there is one thing called upstocks that is also good but there it gets stuck yeah. okay yeah. Uh, so the uh, brokers are essential uh, as of now jason so that is given second uh, the your first question rather uh, what you said is what are the guidelines when you are going to invest in uh, bsc and nsc what are the things you need to be taking care of right uh, so yeah. first and foremost is that do not follow the tips there will be the n number of people will keep coming and telling you they will call you they will send you sms they will reach you in all ways and say that you buy this you buy this don't do it that is the first thing right okay Sec- second thing is uh, as i said before if you want to invest invest in exchange traded funds first so whether it is nifty 50 or sensex or few more indexes you can decide if you want to let you know get into it index or uh, auto index uh, no there are so many uh, almost no 20 20 different indexes are there you can look at them and then invest that there the advantage is that it is automatically diversified what do you mean by diversification in, let's say uh, you want to invest in auto industry if you, in, you know invest by one company's uh, share if that company goes for a toss you will lose your money but if you mm-hmm. uh, invest in four companies maybe you know even one goes down the other three uh, give you return uh, similarly the industry level if you buy only auto then if auto industry itself the market itself goes down then you will lose so then you diversify across the industries auto it fmcg so like that four five industries you can do so what happens is this nifty 50 or sensex they pick up the companies from various sectors and hence they provide one index if you buy that <clears throat> index you automatically get diversified uh, in your investment and if you look at the historical uh, returns also 
the return on index is really decent and very good. It is much better than many people who are doing PMS, portfolio management. Yeah. So I would say these are the two quick uh, guidelines, uh, Jason, and more we can talk about later on. Yes, sure. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, um, Ramasar. Just one more question, Sushma, sorry. Uh, regarding the commodities market, uh, uh, if you have any view on uh, the London Metal Exchange, LME, uh, if you've heard about LME, uh, the commodities market, that is not actually the Indian market. It's uh, it's an external uh, uh, London-based uh, metal exchange. Do you have any idea on that one? Yeah, so I, I really don't know. I have not dealt with them, I but I am aware of London um, uh, market as well as Chicago com commodity market. So yeah. these are all some of the uh, very famous and important markets. Uh, yeah. But uh, I I did I did deal with uh, Indian MCX, uh, okay. but it is highly highly uh, volatile, highly risky. Unless you are uh, doing full time, uh, you know, trading, it's Very better important. to avoid commodities. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, anyone has uh, any question? So much is driving, I believe. Any questions, please raise your hand or type uh, in the chat box. We'll be happy to take your questions. Um, now, uh, what comes in my mind is, Say, for example, now how, how you said about uh, stock exchange that uh, broker is important and all. Same thing with cryptocurrency as well. Do we uh, need to have a broker there or we can deal, whether it is uh, crypt, uh, Bitcoin or uh, Ethereum or uh, any other cryptocurrency? Because I have seen, yes, you can deal directly or you can go through broker as well. Correct. So for the time being, you may have to go through the broker because, because it requires, you can go directly, but then you have to be, uh, you know, a little bit tech savvy in cryptocurrency if you really directly deal with that. Uh, in fact, there are uh, people who really full-time dedicate and do uh, that, uh, you know, it is a very interesting thing. Uh, but again, you have to be very careful, not too many uh, reliable uh, brokers are available in cryptocurrency. So you have to be extremely careful on this. As a starting, I think you may have to go through the uh, uh, broker instead of going strike. Okay, great, great. Uh, Giri, thank you, Rama sir. Giri sir has raised the hand. Yes, Giri sir. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Sushma. Thank you for your wonderful uh, thing you people are doing. So many wondering things. And uh, Jason Abraham, like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and, and coming to Rama sir, our uh, Indian legend uh, Bodhi Dharma. <laughs> we are really very happy to see you giving so many things uh, for us financially. We are on, we are all entrepreneurs. We don't know how to handle the finance. We know how to focus the service to the customers like that. But you people are giving so many input. Uh, today, I would, that, the main uh, take care is already I put it in uh, that message. Even uh, Sushma also commented uh, that the liability, we, we thought that all assets are uh, liabilities like that. Today, only we know that uh, those which uh, that asset creating income is uh, asset. Otherwise, the, these are all liabilities like that. Uh, Actually, since we are an entrepreneur, still we don't know how to handle financially. Can you please uh, brief something for us, sir? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Giri. Uh, so, Giri, the, uh, whether you are uh, uh, no, um, entrepreneur or not, and particularly if you're an entrepreneur, you should have finance knowledge. I think when you are in business, the topmost thing is uh, to know about finance, uh, strategy, people management, communication, sales and marketing. These are some of the important things. And finance finance is very, very important. So what is to be known in finance? I think, as I said at the beginning, those three things are the basic minimum. Balance sheet, uh, income and expense, asset and liabilities, cash flow. So those three things are essential for your business and also for your uh, family. Um, so that, that's what I would say as a starting point, Agri. After that, there are so many other things. 
the other thing you as an entrepreneur it is also important to know about all these asset classes and then see how to you know invest when you are getting your profits from your business where do you take it one is obviously you will uh, continue to expand your business but also you can invest in some other asset classes which are giving much better return as well so it can be parallel so the starting point is those three things uh, is what i would advise uh, giri arvara Hmm. Thank you, Rama sir. Actually, still, uh, as I'm, I am not feeling that I am an entrepreneur. I am in only that, uh, what uh, self-employed. I can say that now. Uh, I have, I have to be the transformation to entrepreneur. So I am working for the in the system or on the system. Now only almost three, four months I have been traveling with Pi M Club. even though i am almost 2 3 years i was spending in training field but uh, this four months is a crucial period i learned so many thing uh, from you all legend so i am uh, slowly uh, in, um, implementing i am getting some of the results also within uh, next month i will get uh, almost 50% and uh, january uh, financial year march 2021 will be uh, uh, peak for me after that then definitely there will be three branches uh, that i have to thankful i have to be gratitude for only five am club and especially to our legends you somaji ramasan and and you people are sushma so i have seen so many people uh, every day you people are coming and entertaining and you are giving so many knowledge to us so i am very thankful to this club uh, thank you sir sure thanks giri uh, so as you said you know that uh, four quadrants what uh, you no know, robert kiyosaki explains employed self employed business and investor so that is very important to understand that and move on to business and investment uh, over a period thank you giri thank you sushma uh, do we have a time i want to have a quick uh, feedback Uh, hello uh, hello is it to vetrival yes yes yeah. okay can you just hello? hold on vetrival because uh, soma ji had raised the hand i'll come back to you sure no problem yeah thank you yeah yeah even vetri is also okay only thing is i am <laughs> driving so a little bit i am not uh, really okay right now i just removed my mask okay uh, thank you thank you very much uh, sushma for uh, taking all sides of uh, leadership and finance is the most important thing as yes. and rama is the best man to and nowadays he is relaxed he is not working for infosys so i think his presentation has got all the value and the new things i just wanted to ask uh, rama ji one question the number one question is that uh, what do you do there are many as he said you know you never go to any um, brokers or small place people or anybody absolutely that's one key thing and what will do somebody who has already squandered or taken the money and some private company they would have opened the company is already what you call gone and um, how do you track these people suppose uh, they have already sold and um, you would have even signed papers they sold and transact and vanish how do you track them any any method is there anywhere you can go uh i think there are uh, some grievances uh, uh government has uh, provided if it is um, insurance there is a separate body uh, for mutual fund there is a separate body i'm uh, talking about share only shares only the shares. stocks for the stocks there is a separate body but the thing with the shares is that if they have invested and the investment has gone for a toss it has become uh, you know Uh, negative or zero <clears throat> there's nothing no law nothing can be done about it unless they have done any fraud like like uh, no, this no, guy the here, here investment has not gone bad it is fraud only oh, okay if so then if it's fraud it i think there is there is sebi sebi has sebi has something to handle this uh, so much okay can be traced that's what you're saying yes yes that's yes accurate. yes yes Okay. See, for example, okay. Carvey. Carvey is a broker, so he started uh, misusing okay. the customers, uh, no, uh, funds and customer shares. 
uh, and uh, no they they have been uh, no taken for uh, no, they have been taken uh, question uh, yeah been so similarly no, there uh, was franklin some, there was some franklin of bma time. a yeah. kolkata based bma that yeah. has been already gone from the industry gone so now there is no trace of how to track what has happened according to them there are no see, stocks at all stocks see if they been... if they announced bankruptcy again there is nothing we can do but if it is a, a fraud which can be proved i think still uh, sebi helps in this yeah this is bankruptcy now but at the same time this was done a fraud by somebody before i know see they, they will show they do really internal fraud and they announce uh, bankruptcy so it's very difficult to handle that formally they announced bankruptcy in that case it's very difficult to uh, probe it through sebi uh, it's it's a it's a challenge if it is bankruptcy it is going to be a challenge so much okay anyway thank you thank you very much i am actually uh, what you call ready for going for a meeting so i don't know today our meeting is there so i'm already late thank you very much sorry for taking the call from the car and i was having yeah, the... yeah careful uh, careful yeah, so much yeah. be safe no thank you yeah yeah thank you very much thank you very much right take care thank you yes that reads go ahead ask question not question i can check it out thank you susma ji uh, abraham it's a fantastic uh, effort every week you are taking bringing great great people especially vetri you are volume is uh, too low can you yeah yes sir ah uh, not this is better thank you thank you sir uh, happy to see in the forum uh, my wish is only simple this uh, 17 18 uh, uh, members should be 180 170 that is the value we are bringing and uh, we should grow uh, susma we should work on that aspect also because the people who are coming here enlightening us are not ordinary people and personally i don't have a question i want to share it in the public forum because we are all people here friends here uh, i every day uh, rama sir is there in my gratitude journal because he touched the area which is very crucial for me and he spent really spent good time and wherever i go i speak about him <laughs> even my kids know that uh, rama sir rama sir something like that. so thank you very much sir for being there and doing this work my only wish is only prayer is this number should go i i know that you don't want anything but more people want you <laughs> you should reach more people Uh, that's one only, only prayer all the best to you sir thank you very much in a public forum i just want to express my gratitude thank you thank you vetri thank you very much vetri yes yes uh, we all are in this together so please everyone help us to put this number up it's not because we want high numbers but as vetri said it's because we want people to learn more to know more and uh, i would also confess here one more thing rama ji is in my gratitude journal every day since months now <laughs> thank you sushma let us uh, sushma let us start a club <laughs> rama ji <laughs> followers club <laughs> yes yes <laughs> sure sure there are many of uh, people from our uh, group which are already in my gratitude journal jason is also one of them <laughs> though he doesn't know i never said <laughs> Okay, uh, Kamal has a question. Kamal, please go ahead. Uh, hello, yeah, Ramesh. So, just hi, hi, one, just one generic question. Uh, I never invested in gold, but now my wife also always say, you know, have some gold, have some physical gold. So now Diwali is coming. So, again, the generic question, like. which is the best way to invest in gold for a long term because i don't believe in hard gold it's instead of some you know mutual fund or etf sovereign but i never invested in that it's always in the form of metal only so what do you say this no it's good to get started uh, so one is either etf uh, in a stock stock exchange or mm. index fund gold index fund and mutual fund these two are the easiest and uh, uh, flexible and uh, long term as well you can start with that uh, the government bond comes once in a while it is not always available but these two are always available any day any day any time you decide you can buy this so my suggestion is go for these two etf gold etf 
and index fund and mutual fund. Okay. And, and how much of percent, percentage should be there as a part of goal overall? Overall, if you take the overall, uh, it could be around 5%, I would say. <clears throat> we can go up to 10%. That include metal also, if we, if we use, if we have so No, I'm saying gold. only only gold, 5% is a good thing. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. And other than gold, any other metal? Because uh, now the, now that, the people are investing in Spanish yeah, see, platinum gold, also. In, uh, yeah. So even though gold is commodity, that is very special because that has been there always, right? So investing in gold is always good, no question about it. But the moment you look at other metals, it gets into the commodities. So that is risky. So it is not advisable to do that at this point in time. Once you have a sufficient experience, sufficient education on finance, sufficient mm -hmm. time spent it, spent in it, mm -hmm. and so you have sufficient money, then you can think about it right now. I wouldn't suggest any other metal okay. or, or any Thank other commodity. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Shishma. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I would highlight something uh, which Ramaji had uh, explained about REIT. Yeah, so in fact, I, I was not aware of it, but I'm working with an organization since past one and a half year which is into REIT. So yes, since then I have learned about REIT and uh, it's it's really interesting how, to know how it works. And uh, I'm very, uh, I was, you know, surprised like, okay, is this is also there, which I never knew. So yeah, we don't know many things. We know very small percentage of what we know. So yes, Are thank you. For little more words about REIT uh, can we also know little. So if you want to, if you want to invest in real estate, the easiest way and better way is to start investing in REIT, like gold, gold ETF. REIT is also available in stock exchange. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I remember. Okay, great. So. It has been a great session. Anyone has any question or uh, any feedback, please let us know. You can uh, go ahead or else uh, we'll be closing the session soon. Anyone wants to say anything, Taki, are you there? Yeah, I am here. I was unmuted. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you for being here, Taki. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I know it was more beneficial for anyone, uh, this Ramasars. Oh, yes. I couldn't attend. You, uh, for, you, for you, special sessions are available, Taki, whenever you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. You are ready. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Ramasar, uh, just a quick question, Ramasar. Uh, yes. Uh, regarding the currency market, uh, yeah. for example, the dollar, dollar, the dollar, Indian rupees, and all currency market. How um, how uh, good is it to invest on currencies? Because uh, uh, I hear that I mean, uh, as a part of my learning, it's based on the oil prices. I think the dollars and the oil are uh, it's based somewhat related. So the fluctuation of oil and the fluctuation of currencies uh, is it good to invest in currencies right now or? Uh, yeah, so I, I forgot to include currency as another uh, no, asset class. It is an, another asset class as well, actually. So currencies, is, yes, it is good. But the thing is, it is highly volatile and highly yeah. risky and very, 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 very fast. So um, for you, for if you're working, uh, no normal uh, working person, it is not advisable to get into it. It's highly volatile. You can get, you can make money, but it is short term. Unless you are a full-time trader, you uh, it's not good to do it at this point in time. Or you become really well-versed in uh, <clears throat> all these things, then you can attempt right now, do not attempt that. It, it's a good market. You can make really you know, quick money. You can, within a second, you can make money. You, you know, if you have attended uh, Ravi sir's, Ravi, right? Ravi sir's uh, uh, sessions, uh, you would know. Thank you.
like this. Yeah. So he, he you know, uh, online also he demonstrates how quickly it goes up and down, and you know, you can make money, quick money. But uh, it is highly risky, and it will really uh, you can make money, but then it can really put you into a uh, uh, lot of uh, you know, challenges. So I would advise not to attempt that right now, Jason. Thank you so much, Dash. Thank you so much. Yeah, and also to answer your question, yes, it is related to currency market, uh, is also related to many other aspects, including the oil. Uh, and similarly, there is a linkage between gold and stock. So if the, there is an inverse relationship between gold and uh, uh, stock market. If the gold goes up, the stock market, uh, come, stock market comes down and the other way around. So there are a lot of interlinkages among various asset classes. But in future, things will change. Uh, <clears throat> instead of oil, it will be electricity, right? If everything goes electric vehicles, so the importance of oil will come down. In fact, uh, some of these things can become commodities, like you are, you know, pure water, pure air, and electricity. They can be coming under commodities uh, trading in future. In, in place of oil, these things can take prominence in future. Uh, quick question uh, before winding up the session. Uh, Rama sir, uh, um, do you think that this uh, trading factor uh, over the stock market is actually increasing the um, consciousness or the eagerness or we can say, is it affecting the health of the human person's mind and brain? Because every, every time he is confused or maybe he is actually uh, looking forward, what will happen, what will happen in the future, what will happen? So is it like uh, negativity, any, any impact? Is, is there for a human person or a human brain? Definitely, definitely. The moment you get started started with your uh, trading, your um, your psychology is completely affected. In fact, no, it is a vice versa. Your psychology can affect how you trade and how you trade affects your mind and body as well. So many of the great uh, traders have a lot of psychological and you know, health issues. So, so it is, it, yeah, it is a challenge. It is a big challenge. But there are some people who trade very coolly. In fact, no, I, I myself uh, do uh, sometimes a little bit uh, cash trading, the, basically the stocks, directly stocks, only blue chip top level uh, 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 stocks. Sometimes I do sell and buy, but absolutely cool. Mine is, I do at my own pace, my own thing. I don't really uh, you know, get stuck with all these things. But by default, when you get into trading, there is a high pressure, high pressure on your body and mind. So you should really take care of yourself if you are getting into that profession. Um, you know, proper precautions to be taken care of. Now, not to say that you don't get into it. You can get into it with awareness and taking care of your body and mind appropriately. Thank you. Kushma. I think it's time to wind up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great uh, session. So much of great conversation. Uh, so much to learn from others. Others' questions give more insights, actually. So thank you, everyone, for asking the questions. And I don't see any hands raising up or uh, anyone wants to say anything. The chat is also... Everyone has thanked you, Rama, sir, for the wonderful session. Thank so, you. yes, uh, great, great, great. So, uh, Sushma, next session, I am ready for... Uh... Income types. See, today we have only one or two incomes. Yes, so there are multiple incomes possible, which I would like to present whenever possible. Yes, yes, sure, sure. That's really great, Rama, sir. Thank you very much that you have said yourself. Okay, yes, yes. So we'll be ready with the income side now for next session. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we are good to close our session. I believe just before that, I would like to... Uh, Thanks once again, Rama sir, and I would like to introduce our uh, next week's uh, speaker, which is, okay, I need to open my presentation now. Sorry, guys. Give me a minute, please. Jason, if you can just have a, some conversation. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so I think Sushma will take some time. Uh, before that, uh, Ramasa, um, how was the journey in Infosys? Small. Oh, okay, it's snap. beautiful. Beautiful uh, journey. In fact, uh, particularly, see, uh, most of the Indian companies, uh, what they have done is they have really made use of the opportunity uh, during 19, uh, uh, you know, late 1980s and 1990s uh, and 2000s specifically, uh, Y2K and all those things. So it was an excellent opportunity, and uh, no, the top guys, no, uh, Narayana Murthy, Asim yeah. and the Tata uh, group, they have really taken advantage of. But one thing they have all not done properly is that making use of the talent for coming out with yeah. software products, right? So we had an excellent opportunity to come out with the software products. It is the same guys, the Indians who are sitting in California and coming out with the products, but we could have done it in India. Right, we would have yeah. been top leaders in the India, which we are not. Done. But interestingly, I uh, in 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 Infosys there is one in, in fact whole of India. If you take Indian software companies, really one of the big and really great product software product. Uh, not many people have it. One of, one such product is from Infosys called Finaco. It is a banking code banking product. Banking, it covers the complete uh, banking uh, uh, functionalities, core banking, internet, mobile, <clears throat> treasury, uh, everything, all the aspects, you know, uh, mutual funds, investment, everything it, it covers. So Great. Great. luckily I was in that division and it was because of Nandan Nilakani, uh, it was surviving. Otherwise uh, that the board every year the board used to review and will be the financial uh, no the banking product used to be always negative, so the board will say no no let's close this, but Nandan Ilakani always stands up and say no it is required it is very important, and today we are all proud that you know uh, this is one of the greatest uh, world class banking product available anywhere in the world any bank which chooses, which wants to select a, a core banking product, uh, enforces Indian financial product is always looked at and evaluated. So I was part of that throughout my life in Infosys. So I'm proud of that. Amazing, amazing, Jack. Great, great, great. Thank you, Rama, sir. Thank you everyone for being here at this hour of the time. And so we, Close this session and I'm just giving a small brief about the next week's speaker who is Maha Zahid. She's the people and culture manager. She's uh, basically an HR professional and she'll be taking next week's session. The more you will see more details in the flyer which will come up soon. So Rama sir, once again, closing this session at the note of a big thank you to you. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everyone, being here. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice evening. Bye -bye.